Hello students, this is Mr. Boyd. In this lesson, we're going to look at different types of solutions. In most of the equations we've looked at so far, there's only been one solution. However, there are two special cases, the no solution and the infinite solution situation. Okay? We're going to solve these equations and see what happens, and see if we can determine how does that occur. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and review a couple things. When we solve equations with variables on both sides, we want to use our acronym DCMI. We want to look and see if we can distribute combine like terms, move the variables across the equal sign, and we do that using addition or subtraction. And then the last step we want to do is isolate the variable, and usually we're going to have a two-step equation to, to uh, solve to isolate the variable. So let's look at this first equation here. Um, we're already being told that there's only one solution, so let's see what happens so that we only get one solution. So let's go ahead and distribute the 3 to the 2x and to the 9. And when we do that, we're going to end up with 6x plus 27 equals negative 5 minus 2x. Okay? Now, we have no like terms to combine. But we do need to move the variables to one side. Now, when I look at this equation, I notice that I've got a minus 2 or a negative 2x, and I've got a 6x. So I always like to move the smaller one. And negative 2 is smaller than 6, so I'm going to go ahead and add 2x to both sides. That's the inverse of adding negative 2x, is to add a positive 2x. On this side, I will also add 2x. Now, when I do that, that's going to give me 8x plus 27 equals negative 5. Now, notice I've still got an x in this equation. So that automatically tells me that I'm going to have one solution. X is going to equal some number. Let's go ahead and finish solving this out and see what happens. So we would subtract 27 from both sides. And when we do that, we've got 8x left on the left side. We've got negative 32 on the right side. We would divide by 8. And we would finish up with x equals negative 4. So there's only one solution that works for this equation, and that's the number negative 4. Okay? Let's look at the next situation and see what happens. So again, I notice I've got distribution I need to take care of first. So I'm going to distribute the 4. So that's going to give me 7x minus 9 minus 3x equals 4x plus 12 plus 1. Now then, next thing I notice is that I've got some like terms here. So I've got a 7x minus 3x, and I also have a 12 plus 1 over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine those. So 7x minus 3x would give me a 4x. I don't have anything to do with that 9, so I'll go ahead and just bring that down with my 4x. Leave it on the left-hand side of the equal sign. On the right side, I would have 4x plus 13. Now let's make some observations about what we have here. When I look at this, I see I have the same variable term on both sides of the equal sign. I have a 4x on the left, and I have a 4x on the right. Okay? But I have a minus 9 and a plus 13. So let's see what happens whenever I go ahead and move those variables across. So if I subtract the 4x from both sides, well, 4 minus 4 is 0. So I'm going to end up with 0 minus 9 equals 0 plus 13. Now, we know from previous experience we don't typically write the 0 down, so I'm going to go ahead and take that out of the problem. And so now we've got the, we have no variables left in the equation. And we've got this strange situation where this thing says not, negative 9 equals 13. Now, that is not true. That is a false statement. 
negative 9 will never equal 13. Therefore, there is no solution, which means there is no number that makes this equation true. Doesn't matter what number we pick for this equation, there will never be a, a, a number that will make this true. That should kind of make sense to us because we've got 4 times a number minus 9 equals 4 times that same number plus 13. Okay? That just should not make sense to us. All right? So let's now take a look at the last one that's called an infinite solution. What is going on? What, what do they mean by an infinite solution? So let's go ahead and distribute here. So I'm going to distribute the negative 2 to both the 3x and the minus 5. When I do that, I'm going to have negative 6x. Negative 2 times negative 5 is plus 10. Okay. I've got a 2 2x plus 10 minus 8x. Okay, now let's look and see if we've got any like terms we can combine. I have no like terms on the left side, but I do have some like terms on the right side. I've got a 2x minus an 8x. So let's see that when I combine those, that's going to be negative 6x plus 10. And 2 minus 8 is going to be a negative 6x plus 10. Now notice on this one, that I've got the same, same exact variable expression on both sides, and I have the same exact con constant on both sides. In other words, the two sides of these, this equation is identical. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and finish solving this one out like we did the no solution one, and let's see what happens here. So in this case, I would add, add 6x to both sides doesn't do any good to pick the smaller one because they're identical. Okay, when I do negative 6 plus 6, that's 0. Plus 10 equals, again, that's 0. Plus 10. Now we know that we don't write the 0 down most of the time. 10 equals 10. Is that a true statement? That is a true statement. Now I want you to notice we have no variables left. So since we don't have a variable, we can't have one solution. We either have to have a no solution or an infinite solution. And since this is a true statement, this is what we call infinite solutions. In other words, regardless of the number we pick, regardless of the number we pick for the, that, the solution to this equation, this is going to be true. And that should kind of make sense since we say negative 6 times a number plus 10 equals negative 6 times a number plus 10. doesn't matter what we've got. For numbers because we've got to use the same number for x on both sides and if we multiply that same number by 6 and add 10 well this is going to always be equal okay all right guys let's roll on down and let's see what we've got for some other examples so what does this mean this is the only solution that will make the equation true there's no solution and all solutions will make this true so the, the symbol, I guess we should talk about the symbol for no solution, is actually a circle with a line through it like that. And the symbol for all solutions is this interesting looking R. And this interesting looking R really stands for all real numbers. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more examples here. I think we've got time on the, on the video to do that. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and multiply. I, I've got some distributive property here. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have 5x minus 3 on the left side. On the right side, I'm going to have 6x minus 3 minus x. Now I notice I've got some like terms I can combine over on this side. So that's going to give me 5x minus 3 equals 6x minus 1x. It's going to be 5x minus 3. Now these look identical, so I'm already thinking that since they're identical, any number's going to work here. But let's go ahead and finish solving this out and see what happens. 
So if I subtract 5x from the left, I need to subtract 5x from the right. When I do that, I end up with negative 3 equals negative 3 because these cancel out. They're 0. And so does negative 3 equal negative 3? Well, yes, it absolutely does. So this would be all real numbers or infinite solutions. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. All right, so let's see here. I've got variables on both sides, so I need to look at, do I need to distribute? Well, I don't need to distribute. Do I need to combine like terms? Don't have any like terms to combine. So now I'm down to the move. So I need to move the variables to one side. So to do that, I'm going to move the smaller one. So I'm going to subtract 2n from both sides. 2n minus 2n is 0. 0 minus 5 is going to be negative 5. 9n minus 2n is going to leave me with 7n plus 37 on the right-hand side. Notice my n is a positive number, which is going to be nice. I don't have to worry about that when I divide in a moment. So next I'm going to subtract 37 from both sides. Negative 5 minus 37, those have the same sign, so I'm going to add them together to get 42. And a negative and a negative. Remember, subtraction is adding the opposite. So a negative plus a negative is going to give me a negative 42 answer equals 7n. The last step, I would divide by 7 to isolate in. Negative 42 divided by 7. 42 divided by 7 is 6. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. Okay. All right, guys, I'd like for you guys to try the next two. We'll make these the your turn problem.